What is this? It says choose. Should I just pick zero or one? Okay, then I'll pick one. Huh? Something popped up again. Whatever, I'll just keep picking. Next, I'll choose B. Nothing's happening. Whoa, what on earth is this? The choices go on forever. What in the world is going on? I can't keep picking forever. Sundaman, you seem to be in trouble. Mechen, you showed up at the perfect time. This problem is asking about making an infinite number of choices. An infinite number of choices? Is that even possible? Well, let's think it through step by step. Suppose we have a set called X. And let's assume that X is not empty. A set not being empty means it has at least one element, right? So we can say there exists an element A. Exactly. Since set X is not empty, we can take an element A from it. Well, obviously. Now then, what if we have two sets? Hmm, looks like we have sets X sub 1 and X sub 2 here. If we assume that both are non-empty, then there exists some element A sub 1 in X sub 1, and some element A sub 2 in X sub 2. So we can choose one element from each of the two sets, and create a pair like A sub 1, A sub 2. Yes. Indeed we can form the pair A sub 1, A sub 2, with each element belonging to its respective set. So now we've managed to represent the act of choosing one element from each of the two sets using a pair. Up to this point we're only doing a finite number of operations, so there's no issue. But, what if we have infinitely many sets? Uh, if we assume none of the sets are empty, then we can take an element a sub 1 from x sub 1, an element a sub 2 from x sub 2, and an element a sub 3 from x sub 3. By continuing this process forever, it seems like we could create a sequence, like a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on. But can we really do something like that? It's a bit doubtful to be honest. If the number of choices is finite, then we can just make choices step by step. But it's a different story when it's an infinite number of choices. Can we really say that the resulting sequence after infinitely many choices exists? From here on, we'll need to proceed carefully with the discussion. For now, let's try thinking through an example. Suppose we have infinitely many sets like this. Wow. Each set contains some natural numbers. Yes, that's what it looks like. Let's assume each set contains at least one natural number. In this case, can we choose one element from each set? Um, well then maybe something like this is okay for now? That's pretty random. Do you have any idea how this continues? There's no way I could know that. Yeah, I guess so. If we're making a finite number of choices, picking randomly is fine, but in the case of infinitely many choices, it's not clear if that really works. Let's try thinking of a different approach. How about choosing elements in this way? Madan, aren't you just choosing randomly? No, I'm following a proper rule. Here I'm choosing the minimum value from each set. Oh, so that's how it works. Since the minimum value exists uniquely in each set, it's true that we can choose elements all at once using this method. It feels a bit strange to say choosing elements all at once, but we're just defining the nth value as the minimum of the nth set. It's definitely possible to define a sequence like that. By showing an explicit construction like this, we can show the existence of a sequence made by choosing elements from each set. But such an explicit construction isn't always guaranteed. Let's take a look at an example. This time instead of natural numbers, let's use real numbers between 0 and 1. If we consider subsets of this real interval one after another, for instance, x sub 1 could be the set of real numbers from 0 to 1 half, with 0 itself not included. Then this set doesn't have a minimum value, because no matter how close to 0 the number we choose is, there's always another number even closer. So we can't choose a minimum value. Then let's just choose the maximum value. In this case, yes, that works. But what if the set x sub 2 looks something like this? This set doesn't include 1, so it doesn't have a maximum value. What is this? That's so unfair. And there might even be a set like this too. x sub 3 contains all the irrational numbers between 0 and 1. That's a really strange set. And there could be even weirder sets coming after this. Now, 
Suppose we randomly choose an element a sub 1 from x sub 1, then a sub 2 from x sub 2, and a sub 3 from x sub 3, that much we can do. But we don't know what kinds of sets follow after that. So in such a case, is it really possible to carry out an infinite number of choices? What guarantees this is an axiom called the axiom of choice. An axiom is a foundational assumption from which mathematical reasoning begins. Uh, so that means the axiom of choice guarantees that we can make infinitely many choices. Roughly speaking, yes, that's what it means. To be a bit more precise, the axiom of choice states that when given a collection of non-empty sets, there exists a sequence where each term belongs to the corresponding set. The nth term of this sequence belongs to the nth set. More precisely, this version is called the axiom of countable choice. The full axiom of choice has a broader meaning, but I'll explain that later. If the number of sets is finite, the existence of such a sequence is obvious. But here, we're including the case where the sets are infinite. That's kind of amazing. Apparently there was a lot of debate when this axiom was first proposed. But now, it's widely accepted as one of the standard axioms. There's also research in mathematics that doesn't assume the axiom of choice, but unless otherwise stated, you can assume it's being used. We don't know if we can make infinitely many choices, then let's assume we can. This feels kind of mysterious. It's an interesting way to resolve the issue. By the way, infinite choices is fine as an intuitive way of thinking, but in reality, what's guaranteed is just the existence of such a sequence. Keep in mind that this sequence may not be describable by any specific rule. Saying we choose elements is easy to understand. Still we should also be aware of the nuances involved here. This is getting kinda complicated. Also, like I briefly mentioned earlier, the full axiom of choice actually has a broader meaning. Here we've conveniently referred to it as a sequence, yet that's not always the most accurate description. A sequence implies each term corresponds to a natural number, but there are many cases beyond that to consider. For example in this case, each real number is assigned a set. 0.5 is assigned a set x sub 0.5, and pi is assigned a set x sub pi. If we apply the axiom of choice to all these sets corresponding to real numbers, we can choose one element from each set all at once. I'm starting to lose track of what we're even doing anymore. Now that we've understood what the axiom of choice is, let's take a look at one application. Suppose x is an arbitrary infinite set. That means it has infinitely many elements. Exactly. So we know that some element must exist. Let's call it a sub 1. And since x is infinite, there must be another element. By repeating this process indefinitely, we can obtain a sequence like a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on. Note that an infinite set that can be indexed by natural numbers is called a countably infinite set, or simply a countable set. Hmm, I see. So an infinite set contains a countable subset. Now that you mention it, that feels kind of obvious. Yes, it may seem obvious at first, yet in fact, we're implicitly using the axiom of choice here. Wait, really? I didn't expect the axiom of choice to be needed for something like this. But yeah, I guess it does feel like we're making infinitely many choices. Then let's try proving this explicitly using the axiom of choice. Got it. First, let's consider subsets of the infinite set X. Assume each subset is non-empty. Subsets of an infinite set? There must be an unimaginable number of them. That's true. We can't throw all of them, so here are a few examples. Now what can we do with the axiom of choice? Hi, um... With the axiom of choice, we can choose an element from each set all at once, right? So, if we apply the axiom of choice to all non-empty subsets of X, we can choose one element from each subset all at once. Yep, that sounds good. By the way, X itself is also a subset of X. So we've also chosen an element from X itself. Oh, you're right. So what do we do next? What was our goal again? Boom, what was it? Oh yeah. We were trying to prove that X contains a countable subset. A countable set is an infinite set that can be indexed by natural numbers, right? So let's actually construct a countable set. 
First, we will call the first element, a sub 1. This is how we write that a sub 1 is in x using set notation. Oh yeah, I kinda remember that notation. Here, let's take the element we just picked from x and call it a sub 1. Alright, so what do we do next? Since we've already chosen a sub 1, we want to choose the next element now. We can write the set x without a sub 1 like this. So we just need to choose a sub 2 from this set. You're doing great! Now how exactly do we choose this a sub 2? Well just randomly. Wait, hold on. Earlier we used the axiom of choice for all the subsets, right? If you think about it, this is also a subset of x. So an element from this subset has already been chosen by the axiom of choice. And we can just call that chosen element a sub 2. Yes. Then we do the same thing. Consider the set x without a sub 1 and a sub 2. And choose an element from it to be a sub 3. Of course, a sub 3 has already been chosen using the axiom of choice as well. If we keep doing this, we automatically get a sequence like a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on, because all the choices have already been made. If we consider this sequence as a subset of x, we've proven that any infinite set x contains a countable subset. That was a tricky proof. It's really interesting how the axiom of choice is used. As a side note, using the axiom of choice for all non-empty subsets is a bit of an exaggerated use, I'd say. Honestly, we're making choices that we didn't actually need to make. There's room for optimization here. Even so, it gets a bit technical, so we chose a simpler proof this time. That's totally fine. The axiom of choice might seem hard to believe, but it might also feel like a natural assumption. It's a mysterious axiom. This time we focus mainly on the axiom of choice itself. But what happens if we assume it and go further? And what statements are equivalent to it? These are deep questions. If you're curious, be sure to look into it. Well then, take care everyone. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.